Hey YouTube, it's been about a year and a half since I've started this journey of living in this little tiny house I've been working on. I just want to do a quick update of what I've been going through so far, what I've learned, what I like, what I don't like about it. Maybe you're considering moving into a tiny house or you're just curious in general. just want to answer some questions. I just want to say first off, I cannot believe it has been a year and a half going on two years since I moved into this house. If you guys have been watching my videos, when I first moved in, I had nothing but just a bedroom and barely a bathroom because I moved in as I was constructing this house so I could work on it and have more time. But a year and a half has passed and I just want to do a little bit of review of some things I've learned. If you guys have any questions, feel free to message me or send me, put a comment down below. So one of I want to break this down kind of into a pro and con kind of a scenario, but I don't just want to stick to that format. Uh, I'm just going to go through a little bit of a list of stuff I really have liked and not liked about living in a tiny house. I'm going to start out with the cons, strong believer and uh, you should end on a strong note, so I'm just going to start out with the things I don't like. So the first thing is, it's small. So that's part of the, the whole definition, tiny house, it's small, but you got to deal with that. So if you're coming from a large house with a lot of stuff, you got to downsize. You can't just go out and buy stuff all the time. You gotta plan it out, work it out, and see how it works You know, with what you got. If you're gonna buy something big, you gotta get rid of something. So if you like a lot of stuff, this may not be for you. For me, I've been more of a nomad. I used to live in the back of my truck for a year at least, traveling around the United States, working in the oil fields, a whole bunch of stuff. So this was kind of a, I don't wanna say a step up because I was living in a house, um, but I was used to this. So for me, this was a little bit more luxurious than the back of a pickup truck, so it worked for me. Um, the next con is entertaining guests. So if you're going to have people over, uh, it's going to be a little harder. Uh, you depends on the size of your house. I mean, some layouts are a little more open. Mine is more open, so I can have quite a few people over. Uh, but you're not going to be able to have a big party unless it's mainly outside. So there, there's another con. Also, a liability. So most houses, you know, are people's assets. They go up in value. A tiny house, it's not going to go up in value as much as a normal house would. It's going to go down in value. It's going to be more like a mobile home. So you might be able to sell it for more than you got. I haven't really delved into that market as much as far as how much they go up in value or not. But what I've noticed so far is they don't go up, they go down in value. And so, if, especially if you're going to move it, um, you know, it's going to be more like an RV. So there is a con there. You're not investing your money in something that's going up in value. Also, cold weather. So cold weather is something, depending on where you live, that's going to be a little bit of an inconvenience. You know, houses are traditionally insulated pretty well. They aren't moving, so they're built very heavy. A uh, tiny house is not built heavy. Um, some of them are if they are not moving. If you actually build it on a foundation somewhere, then it's no different than a normal house. But mine is movable, so I got four sides exposed to the elements. The average house does not, so it's going to be a little colder inside, cost you a little bit more to heat. But it's also small, so it's not going to be a ton of heating space uh, as far as your bill. Um, also, finding a place. So this is another big one. A lot of people buy these houses and then they're like, now what? So as a tiny house, there's not a lot of legislation written for you. Uh, you're neither mobile home nor RV. It depends on what title you have. If you bought a trailer and built on it or you took an old RV and just using that title and, and refur refurbished it, like I did. So for me, I am technically an RV, um, even though it's not. So that's how I'm able to go into motorhome parks and whatnot. But you don't really fit in a mobile home area. You don't really fit in an RV, although I've been in an RV park before. Um, you don't really want to stay there long term. That's more a short term thing. So for me, I've been able to find a lot of land just putting an ad on Craigslist and finding people with private land and working out a pretty good deal. But that is a challenge. Also, last one is just being odd. <laughs> so a lot of people don't don't know how to handle someone who lives in a tiny house. They, they think, it, you know, you have many different groups of people. You have, oh, that's so cool. And then you have the people that kind of stare at you like, why? So depends on who you are, what kind of person you are. And if public opinion is something you really struggle with, I don't. Uh, I'm a little odd anyway. So uh, people kind of view you a little weird. And so getting into some of the pros, some of the things I really like. And for me, the pros definitely outweigh the cons. One of the biggest thing I like is efficient living. So for me, this is a build to suit thing. I built this house myself. Not everybody can do that. Some people, they have to have a hired built, but it's pretty cheap. 
but it's more built to suit. So I built this house exactly the way I want it. I have a second story. I'm actually in it right now. I'm, I'm against my projector screen here. And so I have about 200 square feet. Um, it's not, it's small, but it's, it's decent size for a tiny house. So I built this exactly the way I wanted. I wanted more of a reading room that has a clear kind of an area upstairs. And so I built everything into it. Little, little dumb waiter systems that I'm working on right now because it's not finished yet. It's going to be bringing food up from the kitchen upstairs. It's cool. I love designing things. It brings the kid out inside of you. So build the suit is a big thing for me. Um, also luxurious. Now, now this is going to sound a little odd. Um, I have two TVs in my house. And I have a projector with two different surround sound systems. Um, it's a smart house I'm building, so it basically communicates with me uh, and lets me know what's going on, um, building an AI into this, this place. And so for me, this is luxurious. I can live very well here. I mean, I have two hot water tanks. I don't really run out of hot water. Um, and for living in a small little house, I mean, I'm not living like showering in a motorhome shower kind of a deal where you turn the water on and then turn it off, soap up. No, I leave the water running all the time. So I'm not skimping on anything for myself. And for me, it's quite luxurious, and it's very cheap for how luxurious it's been. Um, so I'm not quite done. It is just more of an update for the past year and a half. But I've really, really enjoyed it. I'm putting an elevator back in. It was a giant swing before, but I'm actually installing it properly this time. So I have an elevator and a stair that you can use if you don't want to use the elevator, that you can fold out. Things fold into the wall. Things turn into a desk. So for me, this is this is beautiful. It brings the little kid out of me. It's like designing a tree house, but it's your actual house. So that's cool. Um, simple life. Now, I just got done talking about how luxurious it was, but it's also very simple. You know, I don't have a ton of stuff. I, for me, moving is simple as hitching it up something to my place, taking a few things from the outside, putting it inside, and going. You know, I, I, it's not complicated. It's very, very simple. Um, you know, for me, I have so much time to sit around and think because I don't need to work a lot. You know, I don't have to have, I'm going to get into expenses in just a little bit here, but I don't need to have a full-time job, slave to my job, because my expenses are so low and everything in my house is so well organized because it's so small. You have to be well organized. It just, it frees you up. You're not taking care of this huge house, having to clean it all the time, vacuuming all the time. I can vacuum my house in like five minutes. <laughs> it's done. <laughs> it's small. I mean, it's 200 square feet. Um, so for me, it's just so simple. It, it's such a stress reliever. I don't have to focus and worry about anything in my house. I built the whole thing. So if anything were to happen to it, I can fix it. And it's pretty small. It's pretty simple. It's pretty straightforward. Um, now I realize not everybody's going to have this, but for me, since I built it, that's, that's part of it. Um, low expenses. Now I spend about $520 a month for my basic expenses. I'm going to break that down a little bit. So about $300 a month. It's just where I keep my tiny house. That's, that's the cost of, of just keeping it in the land that it's on. $40 a month is approximately a utility bill. Uh, now that ranges depending on the month and if it's cold or not. But it's around $40 average is what I've noticed. And that's everything. I, I don't have, that's, that's electric, water, gas, garbage, all of it. Um, well, that's, that's not gas, but that's, that's all that stuff all together. I mean, that's pretty cheap. And that's using electric heat to heat my house. So if that's a furnace on and the AC on all the time, $40 a month. It sometimes goes up to 50, 55, depending on if it's really, really hot or not. But I, I have my house set up in the shade. So for me, um, when the sun is out in the middle of summer, I'm shaded. In the winter time, all the leaves are gone, and so the sun hits my house and heats it. So it's perfect. Uh, phone and internet's about 80 bucks a month. Um, that's for two phones. Now the way I have my internet set up is one phone is a permanent hotspot that stays on all the time. Now for some people that would be a no-go. That's too slow. For me I have a router hitched up to it and I can stream Netflix. I can play games, online games. It's not blazing fast, but it's fast enough for me to be able to use the internet all the time for all the needs I have. So that's $80 a month for two phones with unlimited data. So that's my internet and my phone together. And then about $100 for insurance, and that's my truck. I have a, and a motorcycle. So I have full insurance, uh, not just liability. So altogether, it's about $520 a month, give or take. $520 is all I need to live. I mean, just think about that. What if you only needed $520 to live? <laughs> think about the time you'd have if you were saving the rest of your money or you just went to work part-time. Like, all I need to do is work on the weekends, essentially, if I really wanted to, and I'd be able to live. Now, that does not include food. I left that out on purpose because everyone eats differently. I mean, some people eat a ton of food. Other people go out to restaurants all the time, so that's going to range. Um, but for my basic expenses, uh, 
everything all together, $520. So I love how affordable it is. It's very, very affordable, and I'm able to save a whole lot of money. I'm starting several businesses, online businesses and a few other things um, because I'm living so cheap. So I get to move it anywhere. My house is on wheels. So I have a biogas system that I reviewed earlier, uh, but all I have to do is remove a few things outside, hitch up, and go. So if I move, don't need you all. <laughs> I just hitch up a truck to it and I pull it away and I find another spot. So I love that. Um, not really a part of the system. This is another thing. Now you are, but you aren't. For me, I live so cheap and I don't have to work nearly as much as the average person. That just really affords me a lot of time just to think. You know, I can just, I don't know, I, I can't really describe it. it it's. It's a way that, you know, you're, I'm pushing, I'm going to be off the grid here pretty soon. I'm not off the grid yet. I've got a lot of work to do that. But even though my utility bills are so cheap, I sometimes wonder if I really want to because going off the grid costs money. But you just have a different mindset. You're not, you know, you watch people around you just working so incredibly hard for all the stuff they have. And I don't have to work hard because I don't have a lot of stuff. And I, oftentimes I find myself more happy than they are. You know, I, I get to do the things I really enjoy. And so that kind of puts you in a spot where you're not just in the rat race all the time. You're still in it, but, but you're enjoying your life. The quality of your life goes up, personally, for myself. And so, time to reflect, you know, I, I just talked about that, but also secluded. So, I don't live in a tiny neighborhood. I don't live crammed up against someone else or rent in a spot where it's like, well, geez, you know, once I move, I can get out of here. I move up in the world. I live on 12 acres. So, I've got lots of room. I have a dog, so he can run and there's no road noise, but I only live 20 minutes from, actually it's more like 15 minutes from the city of, of Raleigh, North Carolina. So I can go to the city anytime if I want to enjoy it, but I'm, I'm a little out in the country, so I, I'm surrounded by trees. I hear foxes and coyotes howl at night. So I love it. It's like camping. It's a mixture of camping and living. And so well, all that stuff, that's kind of the pros and the cons. I just want to end a little bit with maybe um, just anything else I have to say. If you guys have any questions, let me know. Um, everyone's experience is going to be different. Obviously, I'm living alone right now. I'm single. And so if I was, you know, with somebody else, it makes it a little smaller with two people. I also did things vastly different. You know, my house is, has two stories with an elevator and staircase. And I built all that myself. You know, I used to do remodeling construction. So I did uh, additions and remodels and whatnot. And so I have the experience. Um, but I have room upstairs just to kind of make an office, and downstairs is all the like living stuff, the kitchen, the bathroom, the bedroom. Upstairs is like where you relax and chill, and there's a couch and whatnot. And I think, I think my dog is coming up the stairs, so sorry, a little distracted. Um, but I really, really enjoy it because I've got plenty of room. Um, the winter time was a little cold, and so I had the heat going all the time. But even with the heat going all the time, it wasn't that expensive because it's, it's pretty well insulated. And then you can also move. I can move upstairs or downstairs. This is my my dog's here and he's, hey Charlie, say hi, say hi. <laughs> um, so just some closing thoughts. It's not for everyone, uh, but it's it's definitely been an oasis for me. And I have my own little my own little place and I don't have a mortgage I'm trying to pay off. I built it myself and, uh, and at some point um, I'm looking at traveling and just living on the road and so doing, doing mobile work, uh, which I'm able to do, and then start and having another tiny house on the west coast and so I have a couple of them and just kind of move between them all have different places you know because my expenses are so low I can afford to set up quite a few others so so I want to kind of get into the lifestyle I've just been working a regular job but I want to get more into traveling which is exactly what I'm setting myself up to when you just kind of live on the road and yeah you'll pay some basic you know like 300 bucks a month plus maybe probably ten dollars for electricity if I'm not here you know but that's it and then I can have multiple places I can hop around to and so I've enjoyed it so far uh, it does get cold in the winter and it is a little small, but once you acclimate to it, it's, it's, it's the life for me. So, hope you guys are having a good day. Catch you later.